Good morning. Good morning. Hilarious. We uh, woke up and there's no power. Welcome to Off Grid Living. We ran out of power yeah. right before. Look at the stove. No, uh, no power. No power. <laughs> no power. No power. As cool as solar panels are. <laughs> Do you have your flashlight? Is Daddy outside trying to turn the generator off? Thankfully, it's not that dark. Hi, Mom. Oh. Yeah, I got the generator on. There we go. Hey. We love cloudy Michigan in the winter. Yeah, as Heather said, regardless of how cool it is to have solar, it's still kind of a nuisance sometimes. When you're going through those cloudy spells and you don't get any sun for days, um, yeah, your batteries run low and you're like, can I make it through the night? And then you stretch it just a little bit and then boom, you wake up in the morning, your batteries are drained and you're in the dark until you turn the generator on. So the situation with the generators are, yeah, we've got several generators. Um, and for the most part, they work. The yellow one works fine. Um, we've only had 100 hours on it since the uh, repair. Um, the red one, uh, I pulled the carburetor and rebuilt that this last fall. I think it's mostly reliable. Um, the black one, I sometimes I can get it going, sometimes I can't. So with the generator situation being what it is, Karen and I have decided we're gonna buy a Kohler 20 kW generator. Um, that's a whole house standby system. We're hoping that the system will be more automatic at that point. We won't even be watching to see uh, when the power is low. The generator will just kick on automatically and charge the batteries back up to maybe 60% and then shut off and uh, see whether or not solar comes in to, to top the batteries off. Well, I was able to find a local dealer of Kohler and Generac generators um, who is uh, willing to sell a, a unit to me um, at just over the cost of what I could have gotten it at a big box store. Uh, I thought it was important to get uh, it from a dealer though, so I had somebody that I could draw on their knowledge uh, of the system to get my questions answered about how to hook that up to the, uh, the solar system and have automatic start and stop capabilities. Anyway, we went over to his shop, picked it up on our small trailer, brought it back, slid it off onto our concrete pad, and got it ready for the installation process to begin. Well, I got the generator set down on the pad yesterday. Uh, today, the objective, I'm gonna have to make a run to the hardware store and get some pieces to uh, do the connections and to secure it to the pad. So one of the first things that I need to do in getting this generator installed uh, is to upgrade the gas line. Um, the tank is pretty close here. So I'm shutting off the uh, propane from the tank this will allow me to open up the line and make the changes in the gas configuration. Uh, this regulator right here, this is the primary regulator on the uh, propane system. It takes the uh, gas in the tank from the uh, whatever pressure is inside the tank. It takes it down to 10 PSI. And then uh, it goes down through that copper line, comes up over here by the building, uh, and goes through a secondary regulator. That secondary regulator is the one that puts it down to the working pressure that your devices uh, are looking for, usually around 14 inches of water column. 
We're going to uh, undo this uh, secondary regulator and swap out this elbow down here um, with a different uh, fixture. Uh, we'll put a, we'll swap that out with a three quarter by three quarter by a half inch, a half inch going into the building and the three quarter dropping down below, giving me another option of gas. And that's what I will tie the, uh, the new generator into. So we pulled off the regulator so we can swap out an elbow here with a new T. This gives us the option of running this additional three quarter inch gas line over to the generator. We also put in a shutoff valve right here so that we could uh, isolate uh, as we work on the, the generator. In fact, this gas line is actually live again and, I'm, and uh, we'll, uh, I'm not smelling any gas, which is good. Um, but we'll also shoot it with uh, some soapy water to make sure that we have uh, no leaks anywhere. So the next stage here is uh, connecting that uh, three-quarter inch gas line over around here and into the generator. Um, I'm going to use some flexible line here uh, just to isolate the uh, vibration of the generator from the gas line, the main gas line itself. Um, I'm also going to put a, uh, a small drip leg on here so if there's any um, material that's coming along in the line, it can fall down into the drip leg and be uh, caught. Uh, So what I thought I had is I thought I had a three quarter inch inlet pipe on the generator. However, that is incorrect. They only have a half inch. So I need to have a converter between three quarter inch and half inch pipe. And that's all the pieces I need. So I'm gonna go run to the local hardware store, pick that up, I'll be back in a few. So actually, I uh, I was getting ready to go to the hardware store and uh, just looking over the things that I had um, in the shop one last time, and I discovered I had a bushing. So this bushing will, will fit onto that half inch pipe and it will actually go into this three quarter inch teak. I don't have to use this little nipple at all. So I have what I need. In order to tighten up that gas line, I need to get in and be able to hold the other end of the line just so that I'm not over torquing something and twisting and breaking something inside the machine. All right, I think I've got it connected. Um, the only thing I need to do is I need to put some kind of a block here to support this. And I'm also going to support over against the wall. And then I think my gas line is done. Well, now that we've got our gas line um, hooked up, uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to secure this to the concrete base. And uh, the reason why is it, it vibrates as it runs. And uh, we don't want that thing vibrating off of the base. It's got some holes here in the base that we can just drill right down into the concrete and put a pin. Uh, that'll be sufficient. Mm -hmm. 
quit the gas line run. The next thing we need to do is start working on our electrical connections. We're going to dig a trench and bury some one aught cable um, that will go from the generator all the way around the other side of the building and end into the inverter. Well, we wrestled those big lines into the generator. We still have some battles to fight in terms of getting those things turned and up into the uh, slots where they need to connect. But we're making progress. Well, it's been a while since I've uh, had to do anything to the electrical system, but I'm starting to take the panels off um, so I can get inside into the boxes themselves. I think I'm gonna route it down through this hole right here, um, down straight, straight down the wall here and, and out. We're using um, direct burial cable here, so it doesn't need to be run in conduit the whole distance. However, we are running it in conduit down into the ground so that if someone, if, let's say we have bushes and stuff that weeds that get in here, you can come through here with a weed whacker and weed whack and not worry that we're actually going to uh, damage a line or expose the, uh, the conductor cable. What you working on? What am I doing? Yeah. Um, I'm running a power wire over to this. It's odd that this needs a power wire, but um, you run a power wire over here so that it can keep the battery charged. Oh, so it's And warm. so that it can keep the carburetor warm. Right, that's what you were telling me yesterday. Yeah. Interesting. So it's always going to be using power? Uh, a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. We're on the wrong side of the building to be working out here. Me be in the sun. <laughs> or 75 degree weather, huh? 75 degrees and sunny. That's what I heard. That was the promise. Michigan is a mm. wonderful place. I remember you coming over in the winter, shoveling outside in the snow, thinking, saying, this is actually pretty nice. I can go skiing. I can do this. Looks like we're putting in an awful lot of lines. We've got this big one here, which is carrying our power, which is power coming from the generator to uh, the solar gear. Uh, this next one is actually electrical wire and it's um, bringing power to the battery minder and also to the carb um, heater. Uh, and then we've got another line here that needs to bring two more lines. Um, one is a line that runs over to the uh, brains of the solar system, which uh, allows the solar system to tell the generator to turn on and off. So there's, it's basically just uh, thermostat wire. And then finally, the last wire is going to be a data cable and do cap five, run it inside to the router. And that will allow this machine uh, to post its status um, to a web server host that then you can use a phone app 
to uh, query and find out what's the latest status on your generator. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, hopefully last condo. I hear Landon helping us around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Is he working? He's being your little helper. Are you a helper? Yeah. No. No. Yes? Yeah. I think you should be a helper. That would be a good thing to be. Okay. You need to move so Grandpa can work. the whole spool through and then we'll just cut up the stuff on the other end. Is this the last thing you do for the day? I think this is about all we're gonna do. There's a lot of work inside that has to be done, and there's a little bit more work here in the uh, generator itself. Well, that's where we're going to leave you for this episode, folks. We've made good progress in getting um, all the cables and pipes run between the generator and the power shed. We still have some wiring to do in the internals of the generator and in the internals of the solar system. We'll get that done here on the next episode and show you how uh, things work as we fire it up. Till next time, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and we'll see you then.